Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with Rogue Trader. My deep apologies that it has taken so long for this content to come out. The last few days have unfortunately been pretty rough on my family. I still intend to do a playthrough of this on the channel, along with diving into some of the different systems. For now, this video will walk through my general thoughts on the alpha release, starting with what I liked. I think the premise of this game is fantastic. You play as a rogue trader, which are a small group of human nobles that have their own starships, crew, and planets which serve as their trade empire. This means very early in the game you become responsible for not only the lives of the people on your ship, but also billions of people throughout the galaxy. The game does a fantastic job of communicating the weight of your role and why you are treated with regard by so many people you meet. A big reason rogue traders are able to gain so much power is that they serve as interstellar merchants for the Imperium of Man, which is a human empire that spans multiple galaxies. The Imperium of Man is ruled by the Emperor of Mankind, or God Emperor for short. Rogue traders are essentially agents of the God Emperor, and they receive a warrant of trade which empowers them to do things most humans cannot do. Using your starship, you can journey to distant worlds far beyond the Imperium, set up new trade routes, speak with aliens or Xenos as they are called in the game, and even start galactic conflicts, all with the full backing of one of the galaxy's most powerful empires. This doesn't mean everyone just bows and scrapes before you. Your character has only recently become a rogue trader, and there are questions regarding whether or not you are actually up to the challenge of holding on to that power. The galaxy is littered with other figures whose status is not as lofty as yours, and yet still, they do not see you as their lord. This creates interesting dynamics as you navigate what's the best way to secure alliances you desperately need. There's also a lot of characters who will see your status as an opportunity opportunity to lift themselves into higher ranks of power or push an ideology they deeply believe in. All of this produces a wealth of different options for how to role play your rogue trader and handle the situations you are confronted with. You could be a pirate stealing from everyone around you, a businessman seeking to make the best deal possible, a politician searching for beneficial alliances, a beast who brutalizes everyone you see, or shades of all the above absolutely stellar writing thus far, and it makes me very excited for the full game. Another thing I really appreciate about this game is it feels very different from Alcat's Pathfinder series. The lore and world building continues to be stellar here, but in a completely different way, grounding you in a game world where good and evil are not relevant questions, and all that really matters is your personal perspective. Combat is also significantly simpler than it was in Kingmaker or Wrath of the Righteous. There's not much of a tutorial provided for combat, but honestly, it isn't needed. Anyone who has played CRPGs before will feel right at home with the system. At the same time, there is enough depth where it's definitely worth your while to read through the abilities and understand what they do. Party members can boost each other in interesting ways, and thus far, combat has been enjoyable albeit simplified. Another big difference I appreciated is thus far, there's no huge management system that you have to deal with. Kingmaker's kingdom management was very difficult and could destroy your playthrough if you got it wrong. Crusade management in Wrath of the Righteous was significantly less punishing, but came with its own cumbersome issues and it's questionable at best if having it actually improved the game. From what I have seen, Rogue Trader doesn't have a similar feature that you have to manage, which I deeply appreciate, not only because it removes a lot of unnecessary complexity, but also because I want Alcat to focus their resources into areas of the game that matter much more to me, like dialogue and story. Last but not least, I have really enjoyed the party members that can join your group. All of them are well-written, interesting, and have unique motivations that can be impacted by your decisions. I am a huge fan of large parties and really appreciate it seeing that we will have a six-person team in Rogue Trader. There are seven party members available in the alpha, and I know at least one of them is missing, so it appears we will get a large, diverse group to choose from. Great stuff.
There is one aspect of the game I am neutral on, and that is ship combat. A big part of the game is that all the travel routes that your ship used to know have been wiped, and consequently, you have to figure them out on your own. That means while transversing through space, you can encounter enemy ships that must be defeated before you can move forward. When combat starts, you have a few options depending on who you have recruited, and positioning is a big deal in these encounters, so your own ingenuity will help determine the outcome. I find these battles bare bones and frankly uninteresting. Part of that is obviously because this game is still an alpha so a lot of things haven't been added. But even beyond that to be frank with you I just don't think space battles work well in a video game format. In TVs and movies they work great not just because of the lasers going back and forth but also because the camera cuts to inside the ship, and you see the impact these weapons are having on the ship and crew. Consequently, the captain must show leadership and assign the right people to repair hulls, manage panic, and counterattack. The best I have seen this done is the suicide mission in Mass Effect, and that's not really something you can do throughout a game. So honestly, I'm just not hopeful this will be good even in full release, but at the same time, I put it in the neutral section, because the lore repeatedly hammers home that space travel is dangerous. It would be hard to communicate the danger without having these space battles, so I don't think it's realistic for Alcat to just do without them. Quick note before we go through what I didn't like in this game. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you subscribing and hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the community is enjoying and helps my video spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. Okay, now let's get into what I don't like about the game. Of course, since it's in alpha, there's a lack of polish across the board. I haven't run into any devastating bugs yet, but there have been some hiccups, graphical errors, the map had virtually no detail, and other things that I assume will be cleared up in full release. What I am not so confident will be better in full release is the complete lack of voice acting. Wrath of the Righteous obviously had some voice acting, but large sections of the game were mute. Warhammer is extremely text heavy and I think it would benefit tremendously from being fully voice acted. It's not clear yet if Alcat is going to head in that direction. The alpha starts in chapter 2 and you have no ability to customize the rogue trader. You are stuck with the portrait and the game gives you a couple of brief text options in the beginning to decide your career, which is essentially your class. Whatever class you end up with is maxed out automatically, but then you can choose which advanced class you would like to upgrade into. The same is true for all of your party members. Personally, I connect with the character I am playing as during character creation, so dropping me in at level 15 makes it harder to connect with him and the team overall. It's also weird that the alpha reveals things that happen in Act 1, which might be considered as spoilers. Overall, I definitely would have preferred to start at the beginning, but I am sure we'll be able to do that in due time. Circling back to the careers, you only get four initial ones and then four advanced versions. I am not certain if that's the final number, but if so, it's concerning because you get such a large group of party members. I am a huge fan of having a large, diverse team of characters that specialize in different areas. You can only level up one career at a time, so there's no option to cherry pick different selections or essentially multi-class. Such a small selection selection of class options guarantees there will be a lot of overlap between different party members. I hope this system expands to limit that problem up on full release. My last issue with the game is I don't think nearly enough information is provided on how to advance the main quest. You are told to visit three separate planets, but are not told which system they are in, nor are they marked on the map in any sort of way. This forces you to roam around even when your preference might be to make a beeline for the next major planet. Obviously, it's possible Alcat has done this purposefully to force players into some of the side content, but even if that's true, I don't like the choice. I would much rather that it's clear how to continue in the main storyline, and then I can pursue side content at my own pace. Those are my overall thoughts and impressions on the alpha release of Rogue Trader. We will start a playthrough of it soon, and my channel will definitely cover this game extensively. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.